All right. Well, this really is where the rubber hits the road. Now it's time to freak yourself out and actually reach out to some other human beings and and, and get the ball rolling, get the conversation started about collaborating. So let me just walk you through how this works. We now have our pitch written down. We have our paragraph or two written down about the big problem that our marketplace has, how we can help that marketplace with that problem, you know, where a little bit about our story, we've busted a myth, we've highlighted our key teaching points, we've mentioned the rookie mistakes and what the next steps are. We are now ready to offer ourselves to other people to collaborate with them on content. And there's and we also understand who those we've identified who those respected authorities are because we did that work in module two. So module two was all about identifying who the respected authorities were. Number Module three was all about working out what it is we can offer the marketplace and refining our pitch. This module is all about now producing that content and sharing that content. And the thing that I see happening all the time is, you know, people write a blog post and then, you know, email it off to Richard Branson and say, hey, Richard, can you share this with your audience? Or, you know, I mean, like, that's just never going to happen. Or they write a blog post and they email it off to the biggest company in their marketplace and say, can you share this with your audience? And they get bombarded with requests like that all the time. And they have a standard no policy, right? So most of them do anyway. So the way that you want to reach out to collaborators is you want to, there's a couple of things you can do. First of all, you can ask for contributions. So you can say, hey, we're running a blog and we're looking for people to contribute to our blog. And here are some of the topics that we would love uh, to uh, content on. The good thing about this is that when anyone writes for your blog or contributes to your asset, whether it's a podcast or your blog or email newsletter or whatever, they're going to share it with their audience, right? Because it's good positioning for them. So the good thing about having contributors is they will share it with their audience and they will bring their audience to you. This is how Oprah has built her entire career by just bringing in other people to share their ideas and content and bringing their audience with them. That's how she started out, right? I mean, you know, if you're going to be on Oprah, you tell everyone you know, guess what? I'm going to be on Oprah. You better tune in and watch, okay? So you can ask for contributors. Uh, we've done that on the WP Elevation blog. We've asked Brent Weaver from You Gurus. We've asked Kimberly Lampari from um, WP Valet. Uh, we've asked Jennifer Bourne from Bourne Creative. These are all people that contribute to our blog. The other thing you can do is you can reach out to publishers and offer your content for their blog. And again, what you're doing there is don't use guest posting on other people's blogs for you know to, to build links. That's a complete waste of time. Use it to get your message and your thoughts in front of their audience and drag your audience over to them so that they can see, oh, wow, hey, we had an extra 35 people view this blog post and leave comments because you brought your audience over. Thanks very much for that. So you can reach out to publishers, okay? So two important distinctions here. You can invite contributors to contribute to your digital media and you can reach out to publishers and offer yourself for their digital media. Now, let me just give you a the, the very quick way, the quickest way to reach out to contributors and if someone's not in a position to write blog posts or contribute but you still want to get them in your on your blog or on your podcast the quickest way is by interview and when I say interview I don't necessarily mean a video interview or an audio interview on a podcast which by the way if you can do is fabulous that's definitely what you should be aiming for but if you're not confident to do that or you just don't want to do that that's totally cool just get them on your blog just send them a questionnaire and say hey I'm producing a blog post on this particular problem, lead capture for lawyers, and I'd love your thoughts. Here are five questions. Tell us a little bit about yourself and then give us some key points. I've got an audience of lawyers. I'm going to promote you to them. Doesn't matter if your audience is five or 5,000. You need to start somewhere. So you can just interview people on your blog by sending them a very quick questionnaire. Take them five minutes to fill it in. Send it back. You've got some content. You can interview them on your podcast. Again, as I said, that's if you can, ultimately, that's a great way to go. You can ask for comment. So you can publish an article and you can reach out to someone and say, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I've published this. I'd love you to comment. You can offer your content for free, which I've already spoken about. So contributors and publishers are the two uh, uh, angles that you want to take here. You want to ask people to contribute to your digital media. Uh, these are the respected authorities, by the way. And then you want to offer yourself to the respected authorities to contribute to them. Let me tell you in my experience, the best way this works is if you ask, if you offer to promote them first, if you ask them to contribute to your blog, because, and the way I frame that is just by saying, hey, I'd like to promote you to my audience. 
by showcasing some of your stuff on my blog or my podcast. And then you just grab their content and you push it out to your audience and they bring their audience to you as well. Usually what happens is they'll reciprocate and say, hey, that was fun, you're awesome, we get along pretty well, how would you like to write something for my blog? And then you can start to offer your content to their audience. But I usually start by offering to promote them to my audience because most respected authorities and big big hitters in any marketplace will be inundated with people trying to guest post on their blog. So what I like to do is just play the opposite hand and say, hey, while everyone's hassling you for, to promote them on your blog, I'd like to promote you on my blog. And I'd like to expose you to a larger audience. Very hard for people to say no to that. And you usually find you get more traction with people if you adopt that approach. Now, quick little disclaimer. This won't happen overnight with everyone. For example, when I interviewed Yoast on the podcast, it took me three emails, half a dozen tweets, and a couple of efforts on LinkedIn to finally get his attention. You know, Vlad from Manage WP was a no-brainer. One email and it was done. So it just depends. But once you get a couple of respected authorities on your blog or on your podcast or sharing content, it's easier to get the rest because there's already some kind of inherent trust and proof of concept. So the idea is that you want to end up with the top 20 respected authorities in your marketplace sharing your content and collaborating on content with you because by default, if they are sharing your content, then you are a top 20 collaborator and a top 20 influencer. Okay, let's take a look at the worksheet. Okay, so on the worksheet, pick up your pen and just identify who your top five influencers and authorities are in your niche and the piece of content that you are going to ask each of them to contribute to, because as I mentioned, that is the best way to start. So just write down on your worksheet who your top five rock stars are in your industry and uh, on the market that you've chosen and the piece of content that you're going to ask them to contribute to by way of interview or opinion on your blog. Uh, that's all there is to it. Just get this exercise done and I'll see you in the next video, in the next module in fact, where we start talking about how to qualify the incoming leads that will come into your business as a result of you doing everything in module one to four. Because I promise you, if you do everything in module one to four, new leads will come into your business. You now need to work out how to process them and how to handle them so you don't waste time with tire kickers. And that's what module five is all about. I'll see you in module five.